Well, it's Marianne Hobbs. If you are just joining us, welcome along. Um, this is BBC Radio 6 Music. I am live in Salford and my guest, Max Cooper, is down in London. Good morning, Max. Hey, how are you doing? It's lovely that you could be with us. Thank you for joining us. Well, I, I almost didn't make it, to be honest. <laughs> it was, oh man, last, last night I went to bed after doing that mix. I was, I was feeling a little bit, a bit of a headache and then middle of the night I woke up with some sort of norovirus extravaganza. Oh. It was nasty, nasty. So this morning I was sort of lying in bed going, oh no, can I make it in, can I make it in? <laughs> so I battled through and I, I came in, but if if you hear some strange noises in the background, you'll you'll know what's going on, basically. Yeah, well, uh, we're, we're delighted that you could be here in spite of all of this. But um, <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about the process that you went through to make the new album, 100 Billion Sparks, because it's really fascinating, this, the idea of isolating yourself in a very remote cottage and completely, I suppose, cutting off the rest of the world, everything digital, all the social media, um, telephones, human contact, and... Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, what made you want to try this? I mean, I just, one thing is I'm quite a slow worker, you know, I need time to develop ideas and I constantly, you know, I hate Amazon, right? You know, doorbell rings all the time. <laughs> it's, it's so disruptive, you know, that's one example. Uh, obviously then social media is, you know, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's everywhere, you know, in our life and it's really hard to concentrate. And I think to write music or to do a lot of creative things, you need to really focus and I was finding, you know, finding it difficult to get that pure focus. So I thought I'd love to go away for a month and just not talk to anyone, you know, and just be on my own and, and somewhere beautiful as well. I went to the valleys in Wales and it's a really amazing place. Um, and just just to see what would happen, really, if I if I had that time and that space to, to you know, just to totally focus. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people identify with that, the idea that the, the modern world creates this sense of endless fatigue, really. But once you'd taken everything away, what did you find? What was left of you? Mm. Um, I think it was the stories, you know, that, that we tell ourselves. I think we, our identity and our personality, you know, we, we have these stories about who we are and how we're, you know, what things have happened in our life and how that's shaped us. And, you know, what I found were those as stories, I suppose, the more I delved into them, the more they seemed to be more changeable and, and less solid than I would usually believe. So that was a really interesting, interesting thing. Um, and I also spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, science ideas related, related to, you know, the self and the mind and trying to, you know, build some sort of uh, visual story. So I generally work with, um, with visual artists for every track and then my live shows consist of me sort of playing it's almost like a film you know like school like, so I'm scoring to this uh, imaginary film uh, to write the music and then I brief the video artists afterwards to build the videos which I then can play in the live shows um, so yeah it was um, there was a different aspect to the project but I suppose that yeah that summarizes it in, in some in some sense yeah it's interesting so there was a real kind of sense of clarity that came through um, yeah I think there was, yeah, I, I had time to really delve into things. And also I had time to really get to know my synthesizers. You know, I, I could only take one <laughs> carload of stuff, right? So I had my favourite few synthesizers. And I really, you know, got to spend proper time with them and delve into the, you know, the sound design elements. And I think that improved my, you know, the sort of analogue sound design aspect of my work. It was helped a lot by that that as well. Um, I mean, but it, it was difficult as well, to be honest. It was, you know, the first, the first week or so I was like, well, what am I doing? This is ridiculous. You know, it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> not having anyone to talk to and you know only your own thoughts and the risk of that is you can start getting to these crazy you know you, you know I could have got mad you know I was wondering whether I was going to come home you know insane or something um, and there was definitely challenging moments but I think that that was part of the process and it's nice that the album has some of those the track like Reflex for example which is really you know a dark sort of intense track and that, that came from some of the more challenging moments away uh, and then there was a really beautiful time there you know whenever it was the weather was good and you know, I was just I was just going walking in the in the hills, and you know, it was just me and the sheep, really. And uh, <laughs> so, so you know, I mean, it's, it was near Snowdonia. You know, Wales is such a beautiful place, uh, and not not that populated. So it was just you know, whenever I needed, whenever I was feeling fatigued or like I didn't know what to do next, I could just wander out the door and and you know walk, and it was yeah, it was great. Yeah. I know you have live shows coming up. There's um, Bang Face in Southport on the 14th of March and Fold in London on the 16th. But there's also a very special show at the Barbican, September mm. the 28th, that you've called Yearning for the Infinite, mm. which I think kind of plays into these ideas. Yeah, it's, I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, I'm already working on that pretty hard. It's, 
so they've got you know there's a, there's this theme in the Barbican this year to do with technology and futurism and, and, and these sort of ideas and I I wanted to spin it into a more general this human drive for more and this the data explosion um, and, and the infinite was a, pro, a sort of idea which fit but also an idea which has really interesting religious connotations and in maths as well and would lend itself to really beautiful you know visualizations and really intense uh, we're going to project all around the walls and the roof and try and turn the barbican into this sort of engulfing space in this infinite space so yeah i'm, I'm writing a whole new album and a whole new audiovisual show for the for the um for the performance Oh, that sounds incredible. And also, we are absolutely delighted to have you DJing for us exclusively on the programme today. Thank you so much. The, pleasure. The mix goes down around about 12 noon. Um, mm-hmm. Give us a flavour of what you've done for us today, Max. Um, I, I sort of picked out some of my favourite... Uh, I, I mentioned when I was away on my on my month really getting to know my synthesizers, but there's some people out there who just have a way with synthesizers, which is so beautiful. Um and I've chosen some of my favourite sort of timbral examples of sound design and synthesis and pads, you know, sounds that have a slow attack, they come in really slowly and they sustain for a long time these sort of engulfing, beautiful synthesizer sounds, which just sort of wash over you. I've chosen out some of my favourite selection in that sort of realm. Um, and that was the sort of, that was the basis of the mix, you know, to try, that was the sort of idea behind the mix, I suppose. Lovely. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Pleasure. I guess we should dispatch you back to bed with a lemsit, <laughs> yeah. shouldn't we, by the looks of things? That's it. Yeah, lovely. Thank you so Take much, care. Max. And thanks a lot for playing, you know, my stuff. And I noticed you even play Identity, you know, for, for the breakfast, breakfast Show, which is one of my most intense tracks. So um, hopefully uh, the intense tracks on this mix are going to be, be okay as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>
especially for Julian in Kent who says he is truly centred by this Max piece. Fi is the name of the tune. A big shout out to Laura Meldrum Carter too who's been in touch to say so fantastic to hear Max Cooper talking about his process. Absolutely loved his visuals when I saw him recently and Jeff Johns, big Jeff Johns down in Bristol, our friend Jeff. Hello Jeff says, um, oh I, I love Max Cooper. The show that he did at IMAX in Bristol was absolutely sun- stunning. I've rarely seen a show that was so inventive. And so well it's Marianne Hobbs, this is BBC Radio 6 Music. Welcome to your brand new mid-morning show. Um, something we're going to do every Friday is throw down a DJ mix from one of the world's most exciting artists and this morning I am delighted to be able to welcome Max Cooper, Belfast born, now London based DJ and producer who works frequently at the intersection between music and science and here is a mix that he built exclusively for BBC Radio 6 Music today. You're listening to Max Cooper in the mix for Mary Ann Hobbs. This is BBC Radio 6 Music.
you're listening to Max Cooper in the mix for Marianne Hobbs. (laughs) 